Welcome to our fundraising presentation, Roadmap to Fundraising in Your Community, with a focus on one of our largest fundraising events, the Polar Plunge. So um, I'm Katie Keller, Vice President of Development here at Special Olympics Nebraska. Later on in the presentation, we're going to hear from a couple of our heads of delegation, Carrie Zing, who's with the Lincoln Shooting Stars, and Jen Bellman, who's with our Special Olympics Carney team. And they're going to give you a little insight onto how they've been successful using the Polar Plunge as a team fundraiser. So we at the state office like to have some uh, fundraising activities that we can include our teams in. We know that fundraising is a big part of having a Special Olympics team. And the Polar Plunge is a great way for teams to get involved in a state fundraising event and um, have the potential to raise um, quite a bit of money to help with their team budget. So let's get into a little bit about what uh, the Polar Plunge is. So Polar Plunge falls under our law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics. We currently hold six plunges in the state of Nebraska in the months of February and March. They are held in Kearney, Omaha, Scotts Bluff, Lincoln, Shadron, and Nebraska City. Uh, Polar Plunge, in its simplest terms, it consists of plungers raising money to run into freezing cold water uh, or jumping into pools or even dumpsters filled with cold water, all to raise money and awareness for Special Olympics. Um, as I mentioned, Polar Plunge is part of our law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics Nebraska. Um, the LETR, which we like to refer to it, is our largest grassroots fundraising and awareness campaign for Special Olympics Nebraska. Uh, we have about 1,000 law enforcement, Special Olympics athletes, and volunteers who compete in or who participate in our LETR events, which are held year-round across the state. We've got various law enforcement agencies participating. Uh, the LETR began actually in Kansas in 1981, and then in 1985, a group of eager law enforcement personnel from Nebraska decided to take on this campaign and bring it to our state. And then as the LETR movement evolved here, we had a law enforcement personnel decide to start a plunge about 20 years ago in Kearney, and that has evolved into six plunges across the state. To give you a little idea of funds raised, the LETR worldwide raises over $60 million. Here in Nebraska, we raise over $435,000. And this is done, like I said, year round with events. This is things like polar plunges, tip a cop events, cop on top events, uh, law enforcement sell merchandise. We hold torch runs in various communities leading up to summer games and all kinds of other events. The polar plunges worldwide raise about 25 million and in Nebraska we're raising over $250,000 in our plunges. So how can plunges be used as a Special Olympics Nebraska team fundraiser? Well, we encourage our teams to go out and recruit plungers. They can plunge themselves and then all of the money they raise, 100% of what they raise in their polar plunge efforts gets credited to their team. So we've got several teams that participate. We've got unified champion schools who participate and they get to keep all of that money. So in 2020, we have 34 teams or um, UCS schools plunged. These 34 teams raised over $118,000, which I think is incredible. Um, these teams raised a range of $200 to over $18,000. So you can see that teams can have a significant um, impact on their budgets if they participate in the plunge. Nine of our teams raised over $5,000. Three teams raised over $10,000. So again, I just wanted to highlight this of um, kind of the dent that the Polar Plunge can make in your team fundraising efforts. Um, one thing I want to note is 
while we have our six plunge locations, you do not necessarily have to live in one of those communities to participate in that plunge. So we have, um, for instance, at our Kearney plunge, we have our West Point team. They come and plunge um, at the Kearney event. We've had um, teams that didn't even necessarily know they had people plunging for them. Um, you know, we've had our sewer team have people that are going to school at the University of Nebraska Lincoln plunge at the Lincoln plunge for them. So it doesn't matter where you live, you can plunge in any of the events. So how do we make sure that you get credited for your fundraising efforts? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So when you register for the plunge, you can register, there's a, a form you can fill out and register the day of at the plunge, or we have a first giving pages that you can set up online. And as the plunges get closer, all of that information is on the Special Olympics Nebraska website. But there is a line on the registration form and online that asks, are you plunging for a Special Olympics Nebraska team? And anyone who is must just indicate the team or the school for which they're plunging on that line and you get credited. So here's an example of a form and we'll zoom in a little and you just fill it out right there. So once plunge season is over at the end of March, we go through and we tally for each team or school, how much money was raised. Then we make sure that um, our finance people in our office get that information and then hopefully by April you should see your plunge money credited to your budget. So it's really not that difficult of a process and we're really happy that we can offer this to our teams as a way to raise some extra money. So now I am going to, as I mentioned, bring Jen Bellman and Carrie Zing on. Um, we're going to do a quick Q&A with them and um, hopefully they can share some insights into how other teams can be successful with the plunge. So ladies, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to start out with our first question and then whichever one of you wants to chime in first, go ahead and then the other one. So first question is, can you tell us a little bit about you, um, your team and how many years your group has plunged? Uh, well, I am Jen Bellman. I am the HOD for the Kearney team. I've been HOD for five years, but I have helped coach the team for about 20 years now. Um, as a large group, we have plunged for 10 or 11 years. I can't remember exactly the first year that we did it as a large group, as a team. We had a few people that plunged in the 10 years prior to that. Um, they had it at Fort Kearney. When it first started, I remember going out there and Deb Shower plunged in. Uh, that was one of the nastiest days of the year when they had it that year, particular year. So I know that they did it before I took over as HOD and before we participated as a big group. But for about 10 years, we've been doing it as a group. And we usually have between 10 and 15 participants for our team plunging at any given time. Great, Carrie, how about you guys? Um, I've been with our Lincoln Shooting Stars team um, for 20 years and the HOD for 21 of those years, or 25 years with the team and 21 um, as the HOD. Um, we have a little over 200 athletes and unified partners on our team practicing in 10 sports, so this is a great way to make a lot of money to support the team. And we've been plunging for 13 years. Great. Um, okay, so we talk a lot about teams can plunge, but um, having been around the plunges for many years myself, it doesn't necessarily have to be the athletes and coaches plunging, though we do see a lot of that at the plunges, which we love because it's great to have athletes out at our plunges. Um, but can you tell us who do you generally have on your polar plunge team and how do you recruit them? Is it athletes? Is it community members, your volunteers? Um, if you could just give us a little insight on that, it would be great. So for our team, mostly it is athletes that actually plunge with our group. 
but we do have several other people who form teams that support our Kearney team. So they plunge and they do designate on that form that the, that the funds go to the Kearney team. Our team itself is mostly just the athletes. Um, we have had some coaches that have done their own little themes and done plunges as well. So then they actually separately raised money. But as long as they designated on the forms when they turn it in, it all goes to our team. Um, we try every year to recruit a few can wear athletes to plunge. Obviously, we have some that can't for medical reasons. But what we've tried to do, especially the last few years, is to make sure that the entire team participates in the fundraising, even if they're not going to plunge. And that really helped our um, the totals. It really helped to have other people help raise the money, even if you're not going to plunge. You know, they just tell people, well, we're going to have a team that plunges. And we always do have a, a pretty large gathering of people that plunge. But we try to include the entire team in the fundraising, even if they're not actually going to plunge. And for our team, about uh, two different groups. Am I still there? Yeah, you're still there. Okay. We had two different teams that were going to be plunging in, in memory of Mary Crooks, who had been a long time HOD for Parks and Rec teams. And we realized that both teams were plunging, and so we um, mixed them all together. And so that was a combination of um, Parks and Rec employees, spouses, AmeriCorps workers um, from the one team, and then um, our athletes and coaches with the other team. And, and that has kind of been consistent through the years of uh, a combination of athletes and coaches, unified partners, and Parks and Rec employees and their spouses. And then whoever else is interested in the, in the extended world of, uh, of our team. So we tend to have about um, anywhere from 10 to, I think 18 has been the most that we've had on a plunge team. Um, Jen, you kind of alluded to you have people who maybe raise money but don't plunge. And um, just so everybody knows, while we do want everybody to come out and plunge, there are several cases of people who raise money and for one reason or another um, may not show up and plunge, but we still recognize their fundraising efforts. So I just wanted to, to add that. Um, do you set specific fundraising goals for your plunge team or your team members or is it just kind of whatever you can raise you raise and that's great what what are how do you guys approach that so a few years ago we did start setting a goal for each of our athletes not just the ones that are plunging but each of the athletes on the team to raise at least a hundred dollars um again we do have athletes that can't plunge because of medical reasons but we still want them to feel like they're a part of it a lot of times they will actually come out to the plunge site, even though they can't get in the water, they'll come out to the plunge site and be a part of the festivities. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to set a goal of $100 for each of them. $75 gets you the t-shirt, but we like to add to that a little bit and just push them a little bit. But a lot of our athletes do set up the first giving pages that you talked about earlier. Um, and when they do that, they just set their own goals on that first giving page so that uh, most of them actually will set that goal to be higher than the $100 that we set as their goals. So if they wanna set a goal that's higher than the $100, they're welcome to do that. And we've had some athletes that have raised a lot of money on the first giving part of it, as well as in person. Yeah, and our team, I set the fundraising goal when I'm doing the budget and kind of looking ahead at to what we need as a team for the coming year. And then um, usually by January, we, we know what our theme is. We're telling all of our um, plungers, this is what we'd like to come up with this year. Go ahead and get that first giving um, page set up. We'll try to encourage people to do end of year giving. Um, so that's our first big push for, for getting monies in through first giving. And then each of the plungers set their own goals, um, knowing that we're trying to end up with that ultimate um, pie in the sky amount that we set earlier. Carrie, I have a question for you. Do you sure. set up that first giving page before the first of the year? We do. Set it up that far in advance? 
as soon as we know when the plunge is and as soon as, um, um, cause Katie, you usually have that um, up and going in December, correct? Yeah, we usually try to have it up in December. Um, uh, you know, yeah, December usually. Sometimes we shoot for November, but uh, there's always something. So December is usually a good bet as to when you can go out and look for the materials on the plunge for the next year. Yeah, and that's kind of when I get my big push at that time is uh, the various relatives who need year-end giving. Um, so I kind of start off with a good chunk of change from uh, people that want to get their charitable giving in December. So that's been helpful. Um, so Carrie mentioned the word budget in her last answer, and that kind of leads us into the next question. Um, can you tell us what impact um, your Polar Plunge fundraising has on your team? Um, and are you fundraising for something specific within your budget? So Carrie, you had said that you um, budget for this, which is great. And we love it when teams do include the plunge in their budget. But, um, you know, do you have something specific in mind for your team when you set out to plunge? Um, we found that that works really slick uh, for people giving if they know specifically uh, what they're giving towards. And so each year our pie in the sky amount is uh, set like this year we want to buy uh, new track uniforms for everyone. And so um, this is our goal for, for doing that. And, and if we don't meet that goal, then we'll be paying for tournament fees so that they know if it's the lower end, it's this. If it's the upper end, it's this. And uh, let's push towards the upper end. Um, we do do the big red raffle too, but that uh, is cyclical based on how the team's doing as far as what we found for sales. So this has just been huge as far as uh, keeping our team financially solvent and uh, taking pressure off of raising any other way. How about you guys, Jen? Is there something specific? So we usually try to set something specific that we're using it for each year. Um, two years ago, we needed to buy new swimming suits for the swim team. So that was what we were particularly raising money for. Um, in 2018, we raised $5,200. And then in 2019, we set our goals a little higher and we actually raised um, a little over $7,500 last year. Uh, we haven't set a goal specifically for what we're gonna use it for in this next one, but we do try each year to have a specific thing. This last year, we wanted to buy new uniform shirts for everybody and we did definitely fund that. We do put it into our budget with the Polar Plunge uh, but when we budget it, we don't necessarily have a number that we need or that something specific we're buying with it. But when we get to the point of actually doing the plunge, we do always have a specific goal. We want un new uniforms, new swimsuits. Um, we bought new bowling ramps one year. I like how you, say you have something specific and you let everybody know what that is. We found here with some of our larger fundraising events, if donors know what their money is specifically going to, they tend to, to donate a little uh, more generously maybe. So um, I like that you guys are also doing that. Um, so, you know, the plunge is really a fun event and that's one of the things we promote with the Polar Plunge is come out and have fun. Um, can you guys share any ways that your groups have fun with it, whether it's with costumes or themes or pre or post event get togethers? So we come up with a theme every year. Usually coach Tammy Lauder is the one who comes up with that theme the last few years. That's what she's been the one that has set the theme. And then each of the athletes, um, you know, sometimes they'll ask for advice as to what they should use as a costume. Sometimes we'll help them make the costumes. Sometimes they'll come up with the costumes all on their own. Uh, any of you that have witnessed the Carney Plunge know that my son comes up with some of the craziest costumes out there. The last few years, we've tried to control that into the theme, even though it's always still kind of a crazy costume. Um, so one year we dressed up as Ninja Turtles, one year it was superheroes, one year it was royalty. My son dressed up as a princess for the royalty one. Um, one year we dressed up as Christmas gifts. 
this last year, we did a tribute to Jeff Boston, who's one of the uh, main people behind the LETR. And he's always been really big with our Carney team. So we had our team dress up as different versions of Trooper Boston. They wore costumes that he had worn in previous plunge years, or they dressed up like um, he is as a trooper. It was really a good time. I have no idea what Tammy's ideas are for the next Polar Plunge, but she's come up with some really, really cool ideas. And then afterwards, we always go to the chicken coop um, for the post-party celebration. A couple years when we've won prizes, then what we've done is we had free pizzas or food from Applebee's. We used that for our team picnic. And then one year we actually had a pizza party at a Tri-City Storm game for the people that actually participated in the fundraiser. We try to set our team by um, sometime after October so we can take advantage with the after Halloween sales for costumes. Um, so have a lot of fun with the themes. Usually pick a TV, movie, or book theme. Um, Gilligan's Island, Love Boat, MASH, Grease, Sound of Music, Harry Potter, Clue, Dr. Seuss, Once Upon a Time, Mother Goose, Westward Ho, Mary Poppins, and Toy Story have been ours. And we have fun with the props as well and have some people within our department that help make some fun stuff with that. Uh, had a covered wagon for Westward Ho and a, a cannon that shot out confetti for Mary Poppins. Um, so some other fun stuff with that. Um, and then let's see, we have a pre-plunge supper uh, the night before where we have everyone um, bring their registration forms and all of their money so that we have all of that in advance um, and have a soup supper, um, figure out where we're at with money so that just one person then is, is checking in the whole team the next day. So as a dual purpose, fun and functional. I will tell you ladies, that my favorite costumes of yours. So Jen, I really liked the Christmas presents. I liked that year. And Carrie, I gotta go way back. I loved the love boat one. Oh, that was, um, that was my favorite. Isaac, Isaac with the plate of cocktails, hot glued <laughs> to the- My favorite, martini glasses floating in the lake after Isaac went in. It, yep. it, was, it was good. Um, okay, last question for you. Um, do you have any tips for anyone interested in getting their team involved in using the plunge as a fundraiser, um, even if it's something that maybe has worked really well for you or something that didn't work well, um, what's some insight that maybe people who have never done this before or who are new to it should keep in mind? Oh, a couple things on that, I guess. The thing is you don't have to have a great big team. You can have one person or you can have 10 people uh, and we've done both of those things. We've done it where we only had one or two people plunge. We've done it where we had 15 people plunge all at once. But you don't have to make it a huge goal for several people to participate. You can have however many participate that want to. We, like I said, we do set a goal for each athlete to raise at least $100 um, in the fundraising. And then we explain to them that that's because it, the money goes directly to our team. The money goes directly to them. It doesn't go to us as coaches. It goes to the athletes to help them participate. And we try to make sure that they understand that. Um, we give our athletes ideas for as far as their costumes. And then we usually, we usually only have about a month to raise the funds. But I really like Carrie's idea of starting that a little sooner. Um, then people can take advantage of some of the stuff at the end of the year and that type of stuff. One thing that Carrie alluded to is they have something the night before, which we've never done, but I really like that idea. We usually are pretty hectic the day of the plunge. We do have one person in charge of collecting all the money and they can turn it in ahead of time so that we just try to turn it into um, to Sony as a whole. But for the most part, the athletes just turn in their own money as long as they're plunging. Um, but we do try to have a person keeping track of that during the day. There were the athletes that don't plunge or go into the water. We encourage them to come there and just be a part of things because it really is a huge fun event. But the biggest thing is, you know, we do try to reinforce to them that 
this is for your team. This money goes directly to your team. It's a fundraiser that buys your costume or I mean buys your uniforms, buys your equipment, pays for the bus that we have to lease to get to Omaha or Lincoln. Um, it's for you, not for us. That's one of the big things that we keep trying to enforce to them. And since Tammy's been helping with it, uh, she's done a really great job of getting more people involved. Like I said, whether they actually fund or not, just come out and be a part of it. And gosh, where to start? Um, we, I think communication's huge. We start, um, you know, in December, as soon as people start their first giving pages, uh, sending out our weekly emails that we send to our athletes anyway, letting them know about the practices. So, as a reminder, this is the date of the polar plunge. Um, this is the amount we want to raise. Um, here's the links to the first giving pages for everyone that's plunging. Um, so we, they get that weekly for weeks on end of where we're at with it, what we still need to do. And so we do get a, a good amount of money from families or athletes um, to each of the plungers. And, and they like, you know, specific coaches or people uh, that they like to give the money to. So um, that's goes on and then after the plunge it's here's what we did with it this is what we should be able to buy with uh, the money that we've raised um, and then we make sure and have pictures that we include in newsletters so they can uh, see the excitement that goes along with that um, we're, it's very helpful for us that we have one particular person on our plunge team that i think makes it her goal to be the top female um, fundraiser every year and that's uh, Dorothy's group uh, and she and her husband Joe are huge at um, making sure that uh, people want to give to the plunge and so Dorothy makes sure that everyone in the Parks and Rec department knows that this is our team um, it's, and that uh, everyone has an opportunity to support our team so she you know typically always makes over um, a thousand dollars and this last year was over three thousand so that was great. Um, we also, uh, that gathering stuff, um, the forms ahead of time is really crucial for just making it slick for um, check-in. If people can't be at our um, pre-plunge party, they turn in their stuff to me ahead of time. We have some undesignated monies and that's the point in time that we're deciding who needs to get up to the next level and pushing the money one direction or the other so that when I'm turning and everything at the registration, I had the list of um, this is what each person has raised, what level they're at. And so this is how many of the uh, $1,000 wristbands we need. This is how many 500, this is how many 250, this is how many 75. Write their names on the wristbands. And then as the plungers come to a plunge, just hand those out to them and it makes it slick for check-in um, and, and yeah, certainly takes the, the headache out, out of figuring out how much we made and, and just the organization is pretty critical. And then we do the acknowledgement afterwards of uh, getting uh, thank yous out to all of the plungers, take a lot of pictures and, and uh, give them little photo albums of uh, um, the plunge experience so that they're acknowledged for their um, contributions as well so and then we do thank you cards that we post at our parks rec various locations thanking them for supporting our team too so that I has love worked that. I us. love that that personal thank you I think that's really nice um I do want to kind of piggyback on what both of you said you both do a great job of coming in knowing who's plunging you've got kind of your list i know for you jen tammy does a lot of it but you handle the check-in very well which not even just with our special teams but with the other plunge teams sometimes they aren't very well organized which is fine us and the volunteers can deal with it but you guys come in and you know, a lot of times you have a designated person that checks in the entire team or a group of people and that is something we encourage people to do. If you've got a team, you can designate one person to come in. And like Carrie said, you can get all the wristbands and all the, the wristbands are just to indicate the incentive level that you came in at. So um, 
you know, Jen said you start, you get a t-shirt at raising $75. Well, we give incentives up to $3,000. So the wristbands just let our volunteers at the post party know what incentive level you came in at. But one person can collect all those and distribute them. And it probably does make it easier on not only the, the plunging team, but also the volunteers at check-in. So I just wanted to piggyback on that because you both kind of mentioned that. And it just, it's a way to keep things clean and really you kind of know where you're at fundraising wise. And we've had teams check in with us and say, hey, I thought I raised X amount. Um, you know, the budget only shows this. And um, it's kind of nice when you have a clue where you're at with funds raised. Um, anything else you ladies want to add on this? I did want to add one thing that we did a couple years that, that actually helped encourage donations. So we had issued a challenge um, the one year that I actually did the plunge. That was what their challenge was. They wanted to raise enough money to make Coach Jen plunge. So I set a goal for them. And if you raised X amount of dollars, um, I found out I have a lot of enemies in this community. But... <laughs> I did, you know, and I, and I backed it up. They raised the money and I did plunge with them. I don't usually, but I did that year. And, you know, it's kind of fun if the athletes or anybody actually can pick someone and say, hey, can you get them to plunge if we raise X amount of dollars? We did that um, with a couple other people, set that goal and then turn the athletes loose. And it's fun to watch them work towards that goal. The year that I did it, which has actually been several years ago, um, they worked really hard to get to that goal. But, you know, that was what I said I'd do, and so I did it. So if you have somebody in your community that um, is willing to do that, you know, and I can put in there, whether that be a trooper or a coach or a TV celebrity or anybody, you know, talk to them ahead of time, obviously. But I think that's one method that worked for us several years was just getting somebody to be game and say, hey, if we raise the money, are you game to do it? And, and they would follow through with it, so. Jen, I think that's a great idea. And I think um, that's something that would be a great idea for some of our Unified Champion schools. Yeah. You know, that's if get you try to get your principal, a teacher, an athletic director, um, I think that is a great tip. I think the other thing that everyone who donates money to me knows that um, if I get up to my shins in the water, um, that would be a spectacular year. Um, so usually I may get to the edge of the water um, and they know that and they're fine with that. And so it's, it's kind of a, a laughable that I'm actually saying I'm plunging, but um, um, I, I think that's acceptable, right? So uh, um, it is. You don't, you, you don't have to get too far into the water. A little toe tip a dip will be fine. Um, that so if counts. And yeah. Jen knows that as well because her son usually just goes feet in. Uh, yeah. yeah, he goes in maybe to his ankles and then we're good. <laughs> yeah. so, so people, you know, they think it's too cold. They can't do it. But, you know, it's, it's all about the fun of doing uh, this with, with a group and, and, yeah, you don't need to freeze for um, too long. Um, so, no. <laughs> However, we do have the people that insist every year on going underwater, and I just can't believe that. That's <laughs> it. You don't and have they, to, but people do. It, yeah, yeah, and there's plenty on our team that do, but I just wanted to let other teams know that um, it's un getting underwater and fully submerging is not necessary. It is not. I used to actually get upset with Dustin when he would raise money and say he was going in and then not go in the water. And then I decided, you know what, it's about raising the money and it's about having fun and he definitely has fun with it. So mm -hmm. I just decided that as long as he gets his toes wet, <laughs> whatever, it's good for me. We count it. <laughs> well, thank you ladies. I appreciate you taking time. I think that um, a little insight from some veteran plungers and those organizing teams, um, can really help some of our other HODs and coaches. So um, I thank you for hopping on this. Um, I'm just gonna wrap up with a couple of resources for people who are interested in plunging and need a little more info. 
Um, our Special Olympics Nebraska website, sone.org. Um, if you go under the events section, as I mentioned, plunges fall under LATR. So in the LATR information, there is plunge information. And as the plunges get a little closer, we have the current registration forms. We've got um, where you go to create your first giving pages, which is a great tool to use. Um, and side note, you can use a combination of online fundraising through first giving, but also collecting cash and checks from people and then bringing those to the plunge. But there are tips on how to raise money. There's tips on um, how to get people involved uh, with your team. There's uh, some ideas of what to expect when you get out to the polar plunge. So that's all on our website. And then if there's ever any questions anybody has, um, you can just email polarplunge at sone.org. Um, but usually, as we've said, uh, end of fall, beginning of winter in December is when we've got everything up and running. So thank you everyone for viewing this presentation. I hope that it helps you all out as you decide whether or not to get involved in the Polar Plunge. And uh, please reach out or jump on our website if you have any questions. Thanks.